seems it seems like you hurt some feelings up there by leaving. I didn't leave. They just started excluding me from it. What the fuck am I going to? Emil burst onto the music scene in the late 90s with a sultry voice, a sassy attitude, and rap lyrics about money, independence, and designer clothes. As Rockefeller's first lady, she was featured on Jay-Z's most popular songs like Can I Get A and Jigga What, Jigga Who. She also experienced success of her own with the song I Got That featuring Beyonce. But one album later, Emil disappeared. Don't forget, you can gain access to this audio and one unreleased video per month on the Real Reality Gossip Patreon. Details are in the description box. Now let's get into today's video. Born to a black father and a white mother, Emil Whitehead was abandoned by her parents at an early age. Therefore, her aunt adopted and raised her as her own. By the time she turned 12, she became interested in rapping and started competing in talent shows. However, she told Billboard.com she never looked at rapping as a career. Before she could discover which path she wanted her life to take, she became pregnant by her boyfriend, Kendall Morgan. At the age of 19, she gave birth to their son, Pape, and then things in her personal life began to spiral. Two years after welcoming her son into the world, Emil's beloved aunt passed away. Emil was blindsided. She told Vibe, I was like, it's over for me. She was the one person I had to run to. More sad news followed. Two years after losing her aunt, her son's father lost his life in a vicious crime. All alone with no one to turn to, Emil said she did many things she now regrets, like getting on welfare, clinging to not-so-dependable men, and selling substances. Everything changed when she met two women named Liz and Monique. In 1997, they asked her to join their all-girls rap group called Major Coins. Emil agreed because she never wanted to be a solo artist and always felt more comfortable being part of a group. In 1998, her group members introduced her to Jay-Z. At this point in his career, he was looking for a female rapper to lay down some vocals for his third studio album, entitled Volume 2, Hard Knock Life. Emil told Billboard her group member Liz had, quote, that star quality. Emil added, she was ready, maybe more ready than anybody else. Jay had both of them rap for the single, Can I Get A, and he liked Emil's lyrics better, so he decided to go with her. It was the start of an amazing business relationship. Emil told Billboard, the way we sounded together, it was a good chemistry. Aside from appearing on Jay-Z's third album, the single was also featured on the Rush Hour soundtrack. It was one of the biggest hits of 1998 and peaked at number 19 on the Billboard chart. Emil was also featured on the chorus on Jay's second smash hit, Jigga What, Jigga Who. Since they were experiencing so much success together, Jay encouraged Emil to leave major coins and become a solo artist. She told Billboard she was excited but not really knowledgeable of what was ahead of her. She signed with Jay's Rockefeller Records in 1998 and became known as the First Lady of the Rock. Her life also did a complete 180. She told Vibe, Jay just put this career in my hands. I went from having nothing at all to wearing diamonds. Of course, when an attractive female rapper works closely with a male rapper, rumors start spreading. Emil told Billboard she never had a relationship with Jay or with anyone on the label. She added that he was like a brother and very protective of her. Emil and Jay continued working together. She appeared on his fourth studio album on the single Do It Again, Put Your Hands Up, and joined him on his 1999 Hard Knock Life tour. Emil became a hot commodity and began collaborating with other artists like Mariah Carey, Beanie Siegel, LL Cool J, and DJ Clue, to name a few. She also began working on her solo album, started a relationship with Wu-Tang Clan affiliate Killa Priest, and launched her own record label called Major Coins, named after her former rap group. After two years of being a featured artist, it was time for Emil to work on her own music. Vibe magazine revealed Jay was responsible for writing the majority of her cameos. But when it came to her solo album, Emil did most of the writing. Jay told the magazine, She surprised me. Her album is going to be the surprise of the year because she has a talent for song making. All Money is Legal dropped in August 2000. The album was hyped by the singles I Got That featuring Beyonce and For the Fam featuring Jay-Z. The album peaked at number 12 on the Billboard chart. Unfortunately, album sales were disappointing and critics weren't amused by her materialistic lyrics and lackluster flow. 
In December 2000 with Vibe, Emil announced some major changes in her life. She said she had stopped smoking substances and was a practicing Hebrew Israelite. She explained she was more interested in staying home with her son and boyfriend rather than going out partying. She said she couldn't wait to buy a house, get married, and move down south where the pace was slower. Was she giving us hints that she was over the music industry already? After being featured on the track Hey Poppy with Jay-Z and Memphis Bleak for the Nutty Professor 2 soundtrack, Emil was reportedly dropped from Rockefeller. According to Vibe, there were rumors she and Jay had gotten into it and the label was upset about her weight gain. Years later, Emil told Billboard she walked away from it all because the fame and the lifestyle wasn't for her. She said she wasn't mentally ready to be an entertainer, so she started to rebel. She hated traveling to shows and wasn't a fan of all the partying and clubbing. Her son was also experiencing health issues with asthma and she wanted to be by his side. By walking away, she didn't even think about the legal ramifications. She said, I was not a businesswoman at that time. I didn't have a manager or the things that most artists have. Emil and Rockefeller Records knew she wasn't doing anything to elevate herself as an artist. Although she never had a conversation with Jay, she knew he could tell she had checked out. She said, he thought that as time went on, I'd be ready, but later realized I wasn't. Emil disappeared for many years, but numerous people reported bumping into her at various places. Online users claimed she was working at Macy's and at a Walmart in North Carolina, but Emil never addressed those allegations. In 2011, a Twitter account by the name of Emil Doe was dissing rappers like Rick Ross and Foxy Brown. Emil vehemently denied she was the one behind it all, and it was later proven to be a parody account. She told Vibe, I haven't been in the spotlight in a while, but when I come up, it always seems to be something negative. She gave an update on her life and said she was a mom of three. She also said she was busy working on an urban fiction novel and accompanying soundtrack, although it's unclear if it was ever released. Emil confirmed she hasn't spoken to Jay in years, but she would really like to chat with him so she could have closure. She stated she had no ill will against him and added, he knows I love him. Emil reportedly released a song called Stop in 2012, but it wasn't until 2014 she released her song Remember off her mixtape entitled A Moment in Life. She told Billboard since the 90s was her favorite era, she was using all 90s beats and was collaborating with artists who were popular during that time, like Killa Priest, although she didn't confirm if they were still in a relationship or not. After her song was released, music lovers were unimpressed. The Breakfast Club gave her the title of Donkey of the Day, and the radio host had this to say. Hey, Emil, we good, boo. Please don't do us no favors. That is one of the highest grades of garbage I've heard in a while. See, the thing about comebacks, right, people have to care that you coming back in order for it to be a comeback. It's like being lost. You're not lost if nobody is looking for you. All those years you worked at Walmart in North Carolina, Emil, it wasn't one blog post, one tweet, one Facebook status asking for an Emil comeback. In fact, it's a lot of people who didn't know you were here in the first place. Emil retreated from the spotlight once again, up until a 2018 interview with Hip Hop News Uncensored. Emil gave a different version of what went down between her and Rockefeller Records. She said some of the label's assistants were hating on her and her relationship with Killa Priest. And she also confirmed that when her weight increased from 110 to 135 pounds, she was alienated at the label. Yeah, I got up to a little 135 pounds, if you want to call that big. Okay, yeah, I got this. Oh, so they even said that because you even heard because you gained some weight? Yeah, that I gained weight and that I was real lazy and all this shit. She then stated she didn't leave the label. She was essentially excluded from everything. At that point, she couldn't even get through to Jay directly and had to go through his assistant to get in contact with him. She still had love for Jay, but she couldn't understand where the disrespect from him came from. Like when he reportedly dissed her during a televised concert. Emil said it felt like he was trying to block her from having a comeback. She said, if I come back out, let me do it. Let me do it on my own. If I only get $20,000, let me get that $20,000 so I can feed my family. Whether or not Emil releases new music in the future, we wish her and her family nothing but the best. Let us know if you're surprised by what happened to Emil, and thanks for watching Real Reality Gossip.